Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to the new Dreamers Pro podcast. Now, this is a podcast where we do a full recap on all the news and events that have transpired over the NBA uh, uh, week and all the things that have happened that are interesting. So I want to get right into it. Now, if you guys prefer to listen to this podcast, we're also going to upload it on Spotify pretty much soon. So if you guys, I know some of you guys out there <clears throat> maybe like to listen to your podcast while you're driving or doing other things, maybe cooking or whatever it is. So you can definitely check us out on the Dreamers Pro podcast when we upload that on Spotify. So this is our first episode. This is episode one, and let's get straight into it. So, you know, we're all aware of, you know, this whole All-Star Week is over, and it was we all got to experience a new format, which I thought was pretty, pretty interesting. Now, going into All-Star Weekend, obviously, a lot of things have happened since then, looking at the untimely passing of you know, a Laker legend, one of the greatest basketball players of all time in Kobe Bryant, 18-time All-Star, five-time NBA champion, you know, led the league in scoring, regular season MVP, scored over 40 points over 180 times in his career, scored over 60 points, I believe, six times in his career, one of the greatest competitors in the history of basketball, and certainly one of the smartest players to ever play on and off the court. All of you guys know who've been following the channel for probably the past eight months, nine months. You guys know that I've always been a huge, huge, I mean huge Kobe Bryant fan, probably, you know, probably since I started. You know, Kobe to me is one of the most inspirational basketball players of all time. If I go over his career accomplishments, again, as I said, You know, five-time NBA champion, two-times finals MVP, 18-time All-Star, four-time All-Star game MVP, been on 11 All-First teams, two second teams, 13-time All-NBA player, nine All-First NBA teams, three three All-Second NBA teams, so that's 12 All-NBA defensive teams he's been on. Played 20 years for the same organization. And when I heard about the passing of Kobe, shook up the sports world. You know, so going into the All-Star weekend, the NBA sort of had that to sort of wrestle with. How are they going to honor the legacy of Kobe Bryant, you know, with his untimely passing, as well as all the people that lost their lives, the nine other people and the other families that were completely shattered in that unfortunate, horrific uh, helicopter accident, something I've never seen before, you know? And, um, so that was a cross that the NBA had to carry on their head and going into the all-star weekend, you know, there was still a lot of excitement, but it was a somber excitement. You know, the the Kobe's passing could sort of loom over the weekend. And, you know, the dunk contest was Unbelievable, probably the best dunk contest I've ever seen in my life. Although Aaron Gordon, we all know that he was robbed. We all know that. I mean, yes, it was unbelievable watching these 50, you know, 50, 50, um, each dunk get 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. It was unbelievable. Athleticism was through the roof, but there's no way that Aaron Gordon should have lost that dunk contest and now being cheated out of two dunk contest awards. And at the end of it, he was just like, you know what? I'm not coming back. I'm not coming back to do it again. And some people like, you know, why would you say that? Why would you say, do you know the amount of effort that it probably took for him to go into that dunk contest, the level of preparation that he had to have to go into these dunk contests and really try to put on a show and then to be out there, put on a show, exert all that energy, all the creativity and work that went into it and then get robbed two times in a row. And people are like, why would you give up? W- would you do it again? I mean, he pretty much just got robbed. And I know, I mean, watching that dunk contest, the judges, Dwayne Wade and them, I think they just gave him nines because they were like, they wanted to see the thing end. They were probably like, we got something, something else better to do. And that's probably the reason why. They're just like, okay, man, I want to see this thing come to an end. And that's the reason they put up those box scores because there's no way that he should have lost that dunk contest. I don't care what anybody says. If you watched it, he should have won, but he didn't. 
So the dunk contest was exciting, but it was it had a bit of a letdown in the end. But going into the All-Star game, <clears throat> we were all interested in this new format, right? Now, granted, last season, the NBA had introduced the NBA had introduced this new format where they came up with the concept of team captains. Team LeBron, Team Giannis, you know. And we got to see them go head to head and picking players that they wanted to play with. You know, and this year I think LeBron got the first pick and then Giannis and so on and so forth. So after watching them pick their teams on inside the NBA, a lot of people going into that game, they're just like, man, LeBron, man, damn, LeBron, man, this is this is a wash. This dude pretty much picked, I mean, his team is gonna win. You got Kawhi, you got James Harden, you got Chris Paul, you got Anthony Davis, you got himself, you, you mean LeBron. And Giannis Antetokounmpo went with like an all-African team pretty much for his first few picks. You know, he got Joel Embiid. He got Pascal Siakam. I mean, he had an international team from that point forward. Kemba Walker. He had great players on his team. But going into that game, we thought it was just going to be a blowout. And the NBA introduced this new format, which is going to get, get me into, uh, lead me to Chris Paul in a minute, which I'm going to get into. But they introduced this new format where now they're going to be playing for charities. Because what the NBA was aiming for was a more competitive game. That's what they were trying to aim. And in order for them to honor the legacy of Kobe, they needed to have a competitive game. And if you guys go check out Chris Paul's Instagram, he posted a clip of Kobe talking about the All-Star game and the lack of competitiveness that was pretty, pretty much permeating through these last few All-Star games. And Kobe was like, you know, when me and Chris Paul used to play on the same team, we never lost. And after the first half, we were just going to this thing saying, hey, man, now let's go get them. And Chris Paul being the president of player, uh, um, um, the, the Player Association, I believe so, he was the one that came up with the new format and the fourth quarter without a shot clock. So if you guys watched the game, we saw it. Each team that won the quarter, $100,000 would go to each their respective uh, charities. So the first quarter, LeBron James team blew them out. And they got the 100000 you know, they got the 100000 his charity. Next quarter, Giannis Antetokounmpo came out with the determination and focus and said, we're going to win this quarter now. And Team Giannis came out and smashed them. And they won the second quarter. Then the third quarter ended up being a tie. You know, the third quarter was a tie. So they ended up having to roll the money over. So whoever won the fourth quarter, whoever won the game. And then the fourth quarter started. And that's when I saw something that I've never seen in an all-star game which was a flat-out commitment to competitiveness. The game ramped up. Why? Because in the fourth quarter, remember, guys, there was no shot clock. And the NBA and the game was televised without one single commercial break, which is also unprecedented. You're watching the fourth quarter with no commercials. Timeouts... They had timeouts. I mean, the timeouts worked. But it was really interesting to see that during these timeouts, you're now still engaged in the game, which is good because it kept the audience there. The audience retention was higher. You know, commercials bring breaks. It breaks attention. It breaks continuity. I think that they really wanted viewers to be engaged. And in that fourth quarter, everybody was standing up. Now, I think going into the fourth quarter, I don't remember the actual box score. But I know that Team Giannis had a lead going into the fourth. And everybody was playing to 24 for Kobe Bryant's number. That's the number that they were playing for. Every team was trying to get to this magic, uh, magic score, which I think which ended up being um, the winning score should have been 157 points. And watching the back and forth in the fourth quarter, seeing how these guys were competing with each other going back and forth was absolutely amazing. Now, some people were complaining about the referees almost won the game. Yeah, whatever. 
free throws are free throws. And they asked Kawhi Leonard, what do you think about, you know, the game ending on a free throw? He was like, well, they're points. Are we going to take away all the other free throws that were made up to that point? They're also points too. So I thought that they pulled off an amazing game. The All-Star, uh, the All-Star game was amazing. The best I've seen in a long time. And I remember going to Chris Paul... It was Chris Paul's recommendation to Adam Silver for that fourth quarter format. Which again proves, speaks to the leadership of Chris Paul. Now, getting to Chris Paul brings me to the Oklahoma City Thunder. That's also been happening over the last week. And um, they've continued their winning ways after the All-Star break. You know, they're fresh off a win against the Denver Nuggets, who are the number two seed in the Western Conference currently at 38 and 18. And as I'm doing this podcast, the Oklahoma City Thunder are actually the number six seed in the Western Conference with a record of 34 and 22. And they're seven of three out of their last 10 games. A team that no one pegged to even go to the playoffs. Now, let's do a little bit of a revisionist history here. What happened with the Oklahoma City Thunder this offseason? Paul George was whiffed away in a coup by Kawhi Leonard to the Clippers, which left their lone star, Russell Westbrook, who left to go play with the Houston Rockets, James Harden, in a trade, I believe. And in return, they got Chris Paul. Going into the season, nobody was paying attention to the Oklahoma City Thunder. At least I wasn't. I wasn't. But under the leadership and coaching of that team, the, you know, the, the, the coaching staff, and the leadership of Chris Paul on the floor, they're the sixth seed in the Western Conference. So if the playoffs, if the playoffs were to start today, they will be in the playoffs. And I'll be really interested to know if they get into the fifth spot and Houston gets into the fourth spot, if they play each other in the first round, I'm picking the Oklahoma City the Thunder to win. Because I trust Chris Paul more than I do James Harden and certainly Russell Westbrook in the playoffs. Now, if we look at Chris Paul's stats this season, he's averaging 17.6 points a game, five rebounds, 6.6 .6 assists, at the age of 34, in year 14, shooting 49% from the floor, 37% from the three, 90% from the free throw line, and getting you a steal in a half a game. That's Chris Paul. That's what's happening with the Oklahoma City Thunder this year. Which brings me on to another Western Conference juggernaut, Kawhi Leonard. Now, during the All-Star weekend, Kawhi Leonard sat down with inside, you know, with the inside the NBA crew, with Shaq, Kenny, Ernie, and Charles, Charles Barkley, and they asked him about the load management that he's been under. And Charles Barkley asked him, he said, hey man, listen man, how many times have you guys even practiced together this season? Forget about all these games you guys are not playing together. How many times have you guys even practiced? And Kawhi said something to me that was startling. Kawhi Leonard said that the Clippers have practiced no more than 10 times throughout the entire regular season. Now, I'm a Clippers fan, and I'm picking them to come out of the West. And I'm picking them to win this whole thing. But that's alarming. Guys, that is alarming. Why? You may say, but, what, but why is it so important? I mean, it's just right. It's very important for a team that's integrating two stars into their system. They didn't have a full training camp together. Because remember, Paul George was coming off of shoulder surgery during the offseason. So he wasn't there for training camp in Hawaii, in Honolulu, I believe it was. Kawhi and them were there, but he wasn't there. 
Kawhi Leonard and Paul George have not even played 30 games together this season. And at the end, the last game, I think, against the Boston Celtics before All-Star break, Doc Rivers spoke about his concern that the team is not practicing together due to health, which has to do with Paul George with a hamstring injury, a reoccurring hamstring injury. Patrick Beverly has been in and out of the lineup. And Kawhi Leonard has been nursing this chronic injury that he seems to have that I'm not going to get into. So when Charles Barkley asked Kawhi Leonard this question, it was a damn good question. It's a damn good question. And Kawhi was like, we need to make a concerted effort to play more in the second half of the season, and we need to ramp it up. And they better ramp it up. Because no matter what you think about the Lakers, although I don't have the Lakers being a better team than the Clippers, the Lakers have more continuity. They have way more continuity, the Lakers do. We can't ignore that fact that they have more... If you watch these guys, not only do they have continuity on the court, but they have it also off the court. That's why they're so chummy-chummy. They do things, a lot of things together. And that has everything to do with the leadership of LeBron James. I credit him with the success that they have as far as from a chemistry standpoint. Which moves me on to the next topic of the race for the regular season MVP going down the wire between LeBron and Giannis. Okay? Now, if we look at LeBron's stats at this point in the season, mind you, in his 16th, 17th year, LeBron is averaging 25 points a game, getting you 7.7 rebounds, 10.7 assists, almost 11 assists, which is unbelievable. Playing about 35 minutes a game, which is a little bit too high in my opinion. I think he should be saving some of his legs for the playoffs, playing in way too many fourth quarters. And Chris Broussard pointed out that LeBron James leads the league in fourth quarter scoring and attempts. Unbelievable. Shooting 35%, 34% from the three-point line, 70% from the free throw line. Nothing to write home about. Getting you 1.3 steals a game. And the Lakers are currently the number one seed in the Western Conference with a 42-12 and 12 record. Now, we look at my man Giannis Antetokounmpo in the Eastern Conference. Putting up beast mode numbers. Beast mode numbers. 30 points a game. 13.5 rebounds. 5.8 assists. But he's only doing that in 30 minutes a game, y'all. With no legitimate second superstar. He's not playing with an Anthony Davis. Or a Kyrie Irving. Or a Russell Westbrook. It's Giannis. Giving it to dudes. The Bucks have the best record against elite, more elite teams than any other team in the NBA. Leading the league in rebounding. If I go into the Bucks right now, the Bucks lead the league in scoring with 119.7 points a game. Leading the league in rebounding at 51.8 rebounds a game. Number two in the league in blocks behind the Lakers. And number two in the league behind the Lakers with field goal percentage. These boys ain't nothing to play with. Now, granted, Giannis is only shooting 30% from the three-point line, but he's up 5% than, than he was in the last season. Only shooting 61% from the free throw line, which is something he needs to work on and may come back to bite him in the playoffs if he doesn't get his act together. You got to shoot better from the, th- from the free throw line. Otherwise, you're going to end up being a liability. But now we're splitting hairs because we're trying to compare the two, the, the two players. Getting you 1.1 blocks a game and 1.1 steals. And the Bucks have the best record in the NBA of 47-8. and eight. Four losses clear of the Lakers in the loss column. So I think at this point, Giannis is running away with the regular season MVP. I think his case is all but made. Unless something miraculous happened and the Lakers come and pass him. But you know that LeBron is not going to win the MVP off of, off of individual production. Giannis got that thing locked down, man. 30 and 13. Like seven. How many, how many, how many, how many assists is this boy averaging? It's almost damn near six assists a game. With the number one record in the, in the, in, in the league. 
with no legitimate second superstar and the best record against all the elite teams. Giannis is running away with this award, man. If I had to vote right now, I would vote Giannis Antetokounmpo as a regular season MVP. Now, I don't know if that's going to translate into the playoffs. But thus far, this boy is making a case. This man has been making a legitimate case as to why he should be the regular season MVP. Now, in the playoffs, something different may happen. Maybe LeBron or Kawhi or whoever will take it to the next level. But right now, these boys, this boy ain't nothing to play with. So for me, the All-Star Weekend was a success. I think the NBA definitely took a step in the right direction by introducing this new format. I would like to see what they are able to do with it next year. If they're able to build upon it, put some tweaks into it. I like the fourth quarter no shot clock. I think they should keep the 24 point. I think they should keep that at the 24 at the 24 point because they already named the award the All Star Award after Kobe anyway. It's now called the Kia Kobe Bryant All Star MVP Award. And I thought it was so fitting. That's what I forgot to get into. That Kawhi Leonard was the one that actually won that award the first time the award became available. The first one. Why? Because it turns out that he was really, really, really close with Kobe. And I remember, it must have been about four years ago, when he was still a member with the San Antonio Spurs, during All-Star Weekend, Greg Popovich went to Kobe and said, hey, Kobe, stay in the the air of uh, Kawhi. Take him under your wing for me. Kobe said, sure. You got it. And we didn't hear much about it since then. After that. Just the next season, Kawhi Leonard came back. And this dude was out there looking like Kobe. Shooting from the same spots he was shooting. Bump, dribble, pull up, going left. Dribble, pull up, going right. Fade away. Spin move. Post game. Efficient. Clutch. I'm like, damn, this dude is looking like Kobe. Because I'm a huge Kobe Bryant fan, so I'm looking for who's the next Kobe. Or someone that reminds me of him. Then, the San Antonio Spurs played the Sacramento Kings. And the Spurs ended up winning that game, and at the end, they were interviewing in the postgame. Then, Sacramento King, DeMarcus Cousin, and they asked him about Kawhi, and he said, I heard, he been tra- I heard he was training with Kobe. He's really good. He's really good. And I had the hunch that Kawhi was training with Kobe, but it's only until now that we find out through his own words in the press, in, in the press game conference when he said that he thanks Kobe for all of the long conversation, all the long conversations that he had with him, and all of the workouts. Now, we did a video called The Hybrid Player Between Kawhi Leonard and Kobe Bryant, and MJ, and I said that you just don't wake up and start playing like Kobe. He trained with him. That's how he was able to perfect his move. Go look at his footwork prior to that and after. It's like watching the same thing. Go watch some highlight videos. Or go watch Kawhi Leonard's uh, mid-range game compilation or something. You'll see it. Same damn thing. I'm not saying he's Kobe, but very similar. And I thought it was befitting that he would be the one to win that award. This is your mentor. He passes away untimely. And you win the award and dedicate it to him. Now, a lot of people, maybe people in the media, wanted it to be probably LeBron James. But LeBron and Kobe weren't that close. They were competitors. And even after Kobe retired, they weren't close. Because Kobe always believed he was better than LeBron. 
I watch videos of him saying it. It was only until later that he started becoming close to them. I believe LeBron looked up to Kobe and he said it. But Kawhi and Kobe had a big brother, little brother relationship because of the age gap. Kobe's like 12 years older than Kawhi, 13 years older than him. So it was a suitable big brother, little brother relationship. And to see him win that all-star game MVP, I thought it was apt. I thought it was a nice way to pay respect to your mentor. And for me as a Kobe, Kawhi Leonard fan, amazing to watch. So for me, it was a great week in the NBA. Great stories, great headlines. Um, I had a lot of fun following the, following the league this last week. Hope you guys did too. Again, this is our first episode of the Dreamers Pro Podcast. If you enjoyed it, make sure you check us out on Spotify. We're going to put the link up below once we get that up and going. Again, leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. I want to know what you guys thought about it. Any suggestions? Any things you wish I could talk about? If you have any topics you want us to cover in the coming weeks, leave your comments in the comment section on this video so I can see if I can talk about it in the next episode. Again, this is episode one. I want to thank you guys from the Dreamers Pro family. It's Charles again, one half of the Dreamers Pro family. Catch you guys on the next episode. Peace out. Enjoy. Peace.